I have the giggles. I just posted on Instagram at Daily Comedy News. This picture of this koala. Just look at it. My question to you is, is it me? You'll see. Happy Valentine's Day. Hey, why do air fresheners love Valentine's Day? Because they're so sentimental. Why was the canoe considered a heartthrob? He was so romantic. What do you call somebody with a cold on Valentine's Day? Lovesick. What did the couple say after they were struck by Cupid's arrow? Ouch! <laughs> From short, old James Acaster has written a new book about quitting social media. He says, I'll tell you exactly how I did it and how I now live my life social media free, how I now spy on my ex-girlfriends in real life, and how I now start arguments with strangers in real life. Dave Chappelle catching some crap. The headlines were... Dave Chappelle spoke out against affordable housing plan in his community. Chappelle's publicist, Carla Sims, said Dave Chappelle didn't kill affordable housing. Concerned residents and responding village council killed a half-baked plan. I wonder if she did that on purpose. Dave Chappelle was in a movie called Half-Baked Once. I don't think she did that on purpose. Interesting. Killed a half-baked plan, which never actually offered affordable housing. Now I'm distracted by half-baked. Hey, uh, half ass Jim Brewer impression. What do you think? Pfft. You think Dave's against affordable housing? Come on. It's a real estate deal. That's what they want you to believe. They blame it, Dave. At the meeting, Dave Chappelle said, I cannot believe you would make me audition for you. You look like clowns. I'm not bluffing. I will take it all off the table. The Dayton Daily News reported Chappelle was one of numerous residents who spoke out against the affordable housing portion. One person who was there said, without question, Dave Chappelle cares about Yellow Springs. He's sewn into the fabric of the village. The passion with which he delivered his comments during the village council meeting were just as evidence as when he fought to create living wage jobs with his famed summer camp for residents during the height of COVID-19, blah, blah, blah. Neither Dave nor his neighbors are against affordable housing. However... They are against the poorly vetted cookie cutter sprawl style development deal, which has little regard for the community, culture and infrastructure of the village. So as I understand this, you know, the big shiny headline is Dave's against affordable housing, not in my backyard. But I believe and you'd have to ask actual Dave Chappelle that Yellow Springs has a certain look and feel, and Chappelle would like to keep that type of look and feel. Now, I'm the sort of person, I am a development snob. I grew up in Queens. I wish somebody in Queens had put some sort of zoning laws on anything. They have knocked down these beautiful old houses, and now every square inch of a piece of property is like this townhouse thing where there used to be a lawn, and now you just park your car on cement, and they are ugly, and no storefronts match, and I wish someone in Queens, New York City had cared as much as Dave Chappelle appears to care here. So the other thing, according to the Dayton Daily News, in this version, the developer would build 143 single-family homes starting at about $300,000 instead of 64 single-family homes, 52 duplexes, and 24 townhomes, with an additional 1.75 acres to be donated to the community. So it seems to me here from far away, it's one of those typical development deals where like, oh, yeah, 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 we'll uh, we'll build a school, you know, maybe not first week, but, you know, eventually we'll build some affordable housing. So I have a feeling here Dave is being positioned as the bad guy and maybe he's not the bad guy. It's also possible that I am undereducated in this. Dave Chappelle said, I've invested millions of dollars in this town. If you push this thing through, what I'm investing in is no longer applicable I would say that Ober, that's the developer, can buy all this property from me if they want to be your benefactor, because I will no longer want to. Wow. From TMZ, here's another story that I may be undereducated on, and I hope to get right. TMZ writes, Kanye West is featured on uh, Fivio, is that how you say your name? Fivio? Fivio Foreign's new single, City of Gods? Kanye takes a verse, and from the transcript I'm reading here, the lyric, this afternoon, a hundred goons pulling up to SNL. What? When I pull up, it's dead on arrival. Hmm, what could that mean? And the next lyric seems to be about Kim Kardashian. The language in that lyric, I am uncomfortable even trying to pantomime to you, so I will leave that be. You can read that on TMZ. Meanwhile, people are obsessed with Pete Davidson's bedroom. He did a video call with people last week, and they noticed his bed had multiple stuffed animals on it. 
as well as a huge yellow flower pillow. Interesting bedroom choice there. Now, I like stuffed animals. As I look here to the left here in the studio, I've got a baby Yoda. I've got this cool parrot. I've got this Rufus lion that reminds me of the Rufus lion I had when I was a kid. It's one of those cool monkeys. I forget what they're called. I've got a Mr. Met. So, yeah, I'm down with you, Pete Davidson. I am not going to make fun of you, and I'm definitely not going to do lyrics about you in my upcoming hip-hop record. More details coming out of the autopsy of Bob Saget. Apparently, at the time of his passing, he was positive for COVID. Saget had said in December that he had COVID-19. PCR tests can return positive results for weeks after recovery. The autopsy also showed that Bob Saget had an enlarged heart, 95% blocked on one side. Speaking of health, the New York Times caught up with Bob Odenkirk, who said, I'd known since 2018 that I had this plaque buildup in my heart. He explained that he went to two heart doctors at Cedar sinai and after testing that included an MRI scan, the doctors could not agree on a treatment. One doctor suggested Odenkirk immediately start medication. The other told him to wait. Odenkirk listened to the second doctor, and he remained fine until one of those pieces of plaque broke up. We were shooting a scene. We'd been shooting all day. Luckily, I didn't go back to my trailer. It's that he went to a resting space. His co-star, Rhea Seenhorn, said he started turning bluish-gray right away. Thankfully, the show's healthy safety supervisor was nearby. Odenkirk received CPR and was hooked up to an automated defibrillator. Odenkirk says when he got to the hospital, doctors blew up little balloons and knocked out the plaque and left stents in two places. Pretty scary. Should I start giving out half-assed medical advice and then maybe people will get upset at me and protest my podcast and I can move up the charts? Hmm. Good news, everyone. Futurama is being revived at Hulu. Very exciting. I'm a big fan of that show. Hulu will get 20 new episodes. Original cast members will return, except John DiMaggio. He's the voice of Bender. At the time of this recording, they're kind of negotiating in public. Producers are hopeful DiMaggio will return. Should that not happen, Bender will be recast. Today, Monday, they're doing a table read, and the plan is, no DiMaggio, someone else is going to play Bender. Now, I'm curious to see how this shakes out, especially with Billy West, who's very talented in the room, and, and here's why. On Ren and Stimpy, originally, Billy West was the voice of Stimpy, and somebody else was the voice of Ren. The guy that did Ren got fired, and they just had Billy West do both voices. So I won't be shocked if at the table read today, Bender is done by Billy West. We will see. Deadline writes, I hear DiMaggio, who's traveled the world promoting the character in the series over the years, okay, I see which side you're on, was approached along with the rest of the cast. According to sources, the offer to DiMaggio was in line with that for fellow leads, Billy West and Katie Seagal, okay, they play Fry and Leela, those are important. DiMaggio felt the proposal was not competitive based on the success and name recognition of the original series. The original series aired from 1999 to 2003. Wow, it's been a long time. It came back in 2007 with four direct-to-DVD movies that aired as 30-minute episodes on Comedy Central. Those did okay, then Comedy Central ordered new seasons, those in June 2010, and that was canceled again three years later, so it's been already nine years since Futurama's third, fourth incarnation. John DiMaggio's Twitter account has been retweeting numerous people saying they won't watch the series unless John DiMaggio plays Bender. Yes, you will. Hey, we gotta get moving on these t-shirts. You want to support the show, right? National Donuts Chain t-shirts couple places you can get them. You can go to the buymeacoffee.com slash daily comedy news page. You'll find a posting on there or go to tinyurl.com slash donuts hyphen chain. Shirts are 20 bucks plus shipping. I will get five bucks of that. Tom bought one. Appreciate it. He also donated an extra seven dollars so I can buy Glenn an entire beer. Thank you, Tom, for buying one. He also pointed out a flaw on the buymeacoffee.com slash daily comedy news page, which I've now rectified. I didn't realize you really can only donate in five dollar increments, five, fifteen or like more, because that was tied to do you want to buy one coffee, three coffees, five coffees. And over the years, I kind of wondered every now and then somebody would donate fifteen dollars. And I thought it was a curious amount, but it definitely appreciated. But now I see the idiot that set up the page only allowed you to do one, three or five coffees. Well, I have two new options for you. The first is the ten dollar option. It's a premium option in which you donate $10. That's it. (laughs) I thank you on the show. I have to offer you something back. I will thank you on the show. There's also the new $7 option to buy Glenn a full beer. 
Glenn won't have to drink five sevenths of beer while the rest of us big wigs drink full beers. He won't be embarrassed. He'll have a full beer. So if you want to buy Glenn a beer or buy me a coffee, you go to buymeacoffee.com slash daily comedy news. But let's get moving on the T-shirts. They won't print them unless I sell 30 and I want one myself. I ordered one. I don't get one free. I ordered it. Tinyurl.com slash Donuts hyphen chains. Today's daily comedy news is brought to you by the new podcast, The Best Song Ever This Week. This week's The Best Song Ever This Week is Johnny Cash's Sunday Morning Coming Down. Chris Christopherson landed a helicopter on Johnny Cash's lawn to hand him a demo tape. The rest is music history. You listen to the podcast, Scott Frampton tells you that story. It is a fantastic story. The whole episode is like seven, eight minutes. You've got the time right after this, especially this podcast isn't like 25 minutes today. They were pretty long last week. It was a pretty busy week. The best song ever this week, wherever you get your podcasts. You know, I have this Facebook group. It is Daily Comedy News Podcast Group. Becky asked a question. Becky wrote, Johnny Mac, are you the Johnny Mac that Chris Spencer mentioned on the latest episode of Mark Marin's WTF podcast? I chuckled at that. I am not. However, I know the person Chris Spencer mentioned. He's Johnny M. F. N. Mac. He says the whole words. I know him. He was a writer on The Foxhole on Jamie Foxx's radio station and radio show. We work together. I've been around this guy a lot. He's quite funny. And I promised on the Facebook group, which is Daily Comedy News Podcast Group, I would tell a story. So one of the things I loved about the Jamie Foxx show is Jamie, you know, he's a star. Johnny M.F. Mac, less known. So sometimes (laughs) the guys would be ragging on a celebrity but jamie has to stay on this good side of things so jamie would actually scribble down a joke pass it to mac and then mac would slay a celebrity and then fox would be like ah johnny mac i gotta distance myself from you you can't be saying that about whoever and meanwhile it was fox who was writing all the lines it was really funny so yeah funny dude always enjoyed hanging out with him i'm also reminded uh, you know this weekend was super bowl and i was telling super bowl stories on friday You know, the other thing about being at the Super Bowl was I was working. I remember one night, it was that same Dallas Super Bowl, Jamie was broadcasting from one of his parties. Now, when I say one of his parties, I mean one of his parties. I was at a party, but I had to work, so I'm just standing against the wall. I remember a nice young lady came over to me and said, I didn't look too happy. Would I like a beverage? And I'm like, no, I have to work. Like, I, the boss was so crazy. I didn't even want to get accused of being like were you buzzed at the event like i'm not touching a drop of alcohol i'm not hanging out i'm not talking to the nice lady i'm just gonna stand here looking very serious behind this equipment because we are gonna do this broadcast and we are not gonna get yelled at by the boss (sighs) poor lady probably thought i was just a miserable human being well that night i was a miserable human being imagine being at like this awesome party in dallas like just picture like jamie fox there's a party it's a good party right there's music good looking people there's alcohol and i have to sit behind equipment looking stone cold serious so i don't get in trouble i saw this next one this has been around since january but i somehow missed it in the show prep cbs is developing a new version of the honeymooners first question why second question which is not a question don't But listen to this, this version of the Honeymooners. You're familiar with the Honeymooners, right? Jackie Gleason, Art Carney. You know this one? You've seen it? Yeah, familiar with it? This CBS version is being described as a bold female-driven reboot. The story is described as centered on a new wife, Ruth, and her husband, Alex, who are determined to have a marriage where they are true equals in every way. But what happens when a marriage has two heads of the household? Are they co-heads or no head at all? Hey, that sounds like a perfectly fine sitcom, but that's not The Honeymooners. That's something else. Stop. I hate that they keep taking old IPs and like just twisting it. Just make something new. Make a sitcom called Ruth. Is Ruth going to threaten Alex with domestic violence? Alex, I'm going to send you to the moon. Like, just don't make it. There's no way it's going to be good. Does anyone listening right now? Do any of you listen to this pitch and be like, oh, yeah, that female reboot of The Honeymooners sounds like a great idea. Just don't make it. Seth Rogen is baffled by Hollywood's need to have people care about the Oscars. He said, I don't get why movie people care so much if other people care what awards we give ourselves. To me, 
Maybe people just don't care. I don't care who wins the automobile awards. No other industry expects everyone to care about what awards they shower upon themselves. Maybe people just don't care. Maybe they did for a while and they stopped caring. And why should they? I saw a tweet and I misread it. I thought it said Joe Rogan being considered as host of the Oscars. And I was like, what? Joe Rogan hosting the Oscars right now? Are you serious? Can we please make that happen? It was actually Seth Rogan being considered to host the Oscars. Not nearly as interesting. Congratulations to Mark Marin. He made the Podcast Hall of Fame. He'll be inducted in March. Don't forget today, Hanging with Dr. Z returns. That's right. It's like Dr. Zayas from Planet of the Apes hosting a talk show. 12 new episodes with Hank Azaria, Weird Al Yankovic, Maria Bamford, Dave Foley, Pendulet, Hannah Einbender, Jeff Gorlin, Ron Funches, Gary Anthony Williams, Bobcat Goldthwait, and David Keckner. You'll find it on YouTube. I'm a big fan. Hanging with Dr. Z is back, baby. And from Gossip Corner, Jennifer Aniston shared a photo. She was on the set of the sequel to Murder Mystery with co-star Adam Sandler. Yes, another hilarious Adam Sandler movie is on the way. Thank goodness. She captioned the photo. Back to work with my buddy. Adam Sandler in the photo has a thick beard speckled with gray. Maybe we'll see Adam Sandler gracefully age into more mature roles. Yeah, probably not. No, that's not going to happen at all. No, it's not. The Daily Mail says Jennifer Aniston, the 52 year old, looked youthful and casual in an all black ensemble. She wore a simple black t shirt, but she added some extra decoration with a lei comprised of white flowers. She matched her shirt with black jeans and she lightened up the look with beige and red New Balance trainers. She also had a large beige tote bag with a thick strap over one arm, and she wore a silver luxury wristwatch. In case you don't remember, that first murder mystery, one of the great films of all time, much like any Adam Sandler movie, especially the Adam Sandler Netflix movies, they've all been fantastic. That film featured Jennifer Aniston as a hairdresser and obsessive fan of mystery novels. Adam Sandler played her husband, a New York City police officer, during a trip throughout Europe aboard a yacht... Because why wouldn't they be on a yacht? Police officers make a lot of money. They met an elderly billionaire only to find him dead after the millionaire was stabbed with a dagger. Spoilers, Aniston and Sandler became the prime suspects in the murder and they were forced to clear their names and find the real killer. What will happen in Murder Mystery 2? Why are these two always involved in murders? Isn't that suspicious? Hmm. That's your comedy news for today. Follow the show on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts. Oh my, I'm looking at the clock. Johnny Mac, I thought you said the episodes were going to get shorter again. (sighs) I'm having a good time. So are you, because the numbers are up. So people aren't hating me with these longer episodes. Thank you for listening. Spotify, Apple, Google, Good Pods, Pandora. You know the drill. T-shirts, man. Tinyurl.com slash donuts hyphen chain. Buymeacoffee.com slash daily comedy news. See you tomorrow.